traditional wellness is not up to the job. The traditional approach to wellness is, of course, centered on the doctor and the traditional medical infrastructure and support industries. I am, of course, talking about the multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical industry, the diagnostics industry, as well as the service industry comprising of nurses, radiologists, and other health specialists. In other words, there's a tremendous amount of people who risk losing their job if the old ideas regarding health and wellness were turned on its head. This is what constitutes traditional wellness in Western Europe and the United States. But here's the problem. Traditional wellness is simply not up to the job when it comes to our modern state of health. As I repeated again and again throughout this training, what ails people is not just physical. We are not just talking about physical symptoms because this just shows you what's at the tip of the iceberg. For these symptoms to materialize, a lot of things have to fall into place and these places are quite deep. We aren't talking about social relationships. We are talking about psychological, emotional, and spiritual bases. We're also talking about your place in the world and everything else that's going on in your life. Unfortunately, traditional medicine simply looks at the physical and begins and ends the analysis there. You are just a composite of your physical symptoms and not much more. As I've mentioned earlier, while we made great strides in factoring in psychological inputs to physical illness, it's fairly recent. And if you want to be unkind about it, it really is too little too late. We are still stuck with pretty much an incomplete definition of what it's like to be sick in the Western world. In fact, there are many people who are suffering from a wide range of symptoms that simply won't go away, regardless of how many drugs were pumped into their system, regardless of how many CAT scans and MRIs they go through, the symptoms simply won't leave. Now, I know I'm taking the risk of being accused of making a mountain out of a molehill, but the fact that there's this significant portion of patients that are simply beyond the reach of traditional Western medicine should make us question the assumptions holding up the concept of traditional wellness. It's not up to the job precisely because it misses the point. People are not just their bodies. People are not just the collection of symptoms that you throw chemicals at. You don't simply just track their progress on the chart and once certain physical signs appear, you sign off on them. Unfortunately, this is how heavily corporate, bureaucratized, and automated the health industrial complexes operate. You have to understand that to the modern health maintenance organization or insurance company, you are just a set of numbers. Seriously, you are a set of calculated risks that they take and the end result is their bottom line. The same applies to a doctor. It is no surprise that a lot of people fall between the cracks. Either they get pumped up with too many chemicals and their suffering lasts far longer than it needs to, or they are not attended to at all. I hope it's clear in your mind that this whole approach to wellness is simply not sustainable. In the United States, we burn 16% of our GDP on healthcare every single year, and we still have a lot of people who are not well. They are far from happy. Sure, they got tons of chemicals flowing through their veins, and sure, their physical symptoms have been dealt with, but they're miserable. We have people warehoused all over the country, living miserable, broken, and diminished lives. The problem here is that traditional medicine just looks at people as physical bodies instead of spiritual, psychological, and emotional beings. In other words, we are not looking at the complete person. Thankfully, there is a better way. Planning your personal wholeness program. Let's get one thing clear. If you want to achieve holistic wellness, you have to do it yourself. I know that sounds scary. You probably trust your doctor. You probably have grown to depend on your physician. But if you want to achieve real wholeness, you have to define the whole concept of wellness on a personal level. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to completely cut out your doctor. You have to step up. Understand that you have to be responsible for your complete personal health. Your doctor may be on the hook for the physical aspect of your wellness. Well, that's just one part of the puzzle. As I've mentioned in previous videos of this training, you are actually made up of a composite of many different inputs, your many layers of being. And all of these different factors have to be adequately addressed for you to be completely whole and healthy. Unfortunately, there's no template that you can follow. Now, this should make a lot of sense because every one of us is different. I'm not just talking about genetic predispositions or hardwired physical differences. I'm also referring to your experience, the way you see the world, your personality, how your mood landscape is set up. I'm also talking about your psychological states. You obviously have a different career, or you weren't living a certain way. You come from a different social setting. These differences cannot be papered over. The small variances actually add up to a lot. This is why it's crucial if you totally want to pull off planning your own personal wholeness program to personalize things as much as possible. This plan that you're coming up with will not work for other people. It cannot because it is so specific to you. You have to customize it to your environment, your schedule, and your personal set of circumstances. 
That's how detailed it should be. Also, it has to be based on your lifestyle. It's not just a simple question of what medications you take or which doctor you go to or the range of specialists you consult with. Again, the physical elements of health are important, but they are just a single piece of a larger puzzle. You have to look at the things that you choose to do every single day. You have to consider your daily routine. You have to look at your list of personal habits. Another aspect of your personal wholeness program is sustainability. I don't know about you, but the last time I tried something new, it took a while for it to kick in. I actually had to keep at it for an extended period of time for it to change my life. The same applies to wholeness programs. This is not a one-shot, big-shot kind of approach. It's not like you're going to the doctor's office to get a shot. It doesn't work that way. It has to be sustainable. In other words, when you make certain changes to your daily routine, you must be able to get up in the morning and go through those series of actions without any sense of resistance. Basically, it cannot be so alien, so foreign, and so weird that you stop yourself in your tracks and say, what am I doing? Instead, it should flow naturally from not only the things that you aspire for, but based on who you really are. That's what makes things sustainable. It's kind of like redecorating a home without spending an additional dollar on new furniture. If you've ever seen those amazing home makeover shows, truly great interior designers work with things that already exist. They don't talk the owner into spending hundreds of thousands of dollars buying a wide range of appliances and furniture. They don't do that. Instead, they look at the furniture that already exists and they just rearrange things. Maybe they paint a wall or put up wallpaper or add new lighting. But the elements introduced are actually quite minor compared to the internal reorganization of stuff that already exists. This is how you should look at sustainability. Because the more alien, disruptive, or novel your changes to your lifestyle appear to you, the more unwelcome they will be. Now, you may be thinking on a conscious level that you want to change. You know that deep down inside that you have to change. The stakes are too high and you cannot afford to get sick. You get that on a logical and rational level. The problem is we are creatures of habit and, unfortunately, we will sabotage ourselves. Sooner or later, if the change that you have set out for your life seems so radical, so different and so out of place, it's only a matter of time until you give yourself excuse after excuse to stop. It is not sustainable. You end up bargaining with yourself as to why you should not take that jog in the morning. You'll end up coming up with an excuse why you should not eat that apple and just dive into that German chocolate cake. Do you see where I'm coming from? You have to factor in sustainability, and the best way to do this is to avoid drastic changes. Focus on what you really have. Believe me, regardless of how seemingly unhealthy your current lifestyle is, there are gems of wellness that are already there. You just need to make this change. Just need to reposition this. Another crucial element of your personal wholeness program must revolve around the concept of an all-natural approach. As I've mentioned earlier, people living in Western Europe and the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other places are over-medicated. This is the automatic response of the global medical establishment to any kind of illness. Pump it with chemicals. Now, it's easy to see why this is the case because pharmaceutical companies make billions of dollars every single year off this reality. Once we get off this train, then that industry starts to slow down. They can't let that happen. So a lot of people are walking around with the idea that the only way to truly deal with problems is through chemicals. Well, you only need to look at the overdose disaster happening in the United States to see that this is a dead end, literally and figuratively. Because if your number one response to pain is to take Percocet, you're getting on that slippery slope. The next thing you do is you crush Oxycontin. And then, sooner or later, you'll find yourself hooked. And it turns out that heroin is cheaper. This is not a remote possibility. People are fed into this addiction pipeline by traditional practitioners of Western medicine. You can't just throw chemicals at your medical problems. We cannot continue to idolize the God of convenience at the risk of our long-term health. This is why your personal wholeness program has to be all natural. In other words, you work with Mother Nature in terms of what you eat, the environment you find yourself in, as well as your activities. This is one of the most powerful things you can do because you pull yourself away from dependency, not just on chemicals, but on bureaucratic, industrialized, medical-provisioned infrastructure that reduces you to statistical probabilities. You are more than an ROI projection. You're a human being, a very complex biochemical phenomena. You're very valuable. You should treat yourself accordingly. Your approach to a lifestyle-based, sustainable, personalized, customized wholeness program must be built on the foundation of an all-natural approach. Absolutely no synthetic chemicals. Absolutely no pharmaceutical inputs. The power of balance. One of the most crucial guiding philosophies of your wholeness program as you piece everything together should be the concept of balance. 
it's too easy to take things to extreme. I know that I may be guilty of this when I describe certain concepts in this training. Please forgive me, but you have to always keep things in balance. I'm not saying that you should completely eliminate traditional Western medicine from this equation, but you should not let it be the primary driver either. Instead, it should be balanced out by the impact of lifestyle, sustainable living, environment, social inputs, emotional and psychological engagement, and quite importantly, spiritual dimensions. This is what constitutes a balanced and holistic human being. This concept of balance must be there. Otherwise, you run the risk of leaning too heavily on one part of the equation one day and then going to the other extreme the next. They don't balance each other out. They don't average out. You have to make sure it's balanced all the way through. Starting with video 9, I'm going to go through certain key decisions as well as lifestyle modifications you should think about including in your personal wholeness program so you can achieve greater overall health. Video 9 deals with preventative medicine. See you there. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.